about at least 12,000 years ago, the first people to live on America were hunters, who most likely moved from Asia. They were ancestors of Indians, the Native Americans. Finally, these people spread across North and South America. In the late 15th century, Christopher Columbus, an Italian navigator, thought he could reach India by sailing west. Supported by the Spanish queen, he led his men to sail across the ocean in 1492 and reached some small islands in the now West Indies. He believed he had reached Asia and caught the natives on the islands Indians. Another Italian navigator, Amerigo Vespucci, proved that the land was not India, but a new continent. Therefore, the land was named America after him. The first successful English colony in North America was found at Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. In 1620, the so-called Pilgrim Fathers sailed for Virginia on the ship called the Mayflower. They finally landed in what is now Plymouth and established the second colony. By 1733, English settlers had occupied 13 colonies along the Atlantic coast. Elsewhere in North America, the French controlled Canada and Louisiana. After the Seven Years' War, Britain gained control of Canada and all of Northern America east of the Mississippi in 1763. The economy in the 13 colonies developed very fast. And with the development of the economy, the people in the colonies wanted more power to determine their own business. But the policies of British government were to bring the development under control and to tax more from the colonies. The Americans opposed the unfair treatment. They declared no taxation without representation, that is, without their representatives taking part in decision-making, the Americans had no obligation to pay tax. This brought about the famous Boston Tea Party and finally led to the American Revolution. On April 19, 1775, the first shots at Lexington between colonists and the British troops started the American War of Independence. Three weeks later, the Second Continental Congress was held in Philadelphia and acted as a provisional government of the 13 colony states. The Congress founded the Continental Army and the Navy under the commander of George Washington. Thomas Jefferson drafted the Declaration of Independence. On July 4, 1776, the Congress adopted the Declaration. The Declaration presented a public defense of the American War of Independence. The Declaration is considered a founding document of the United States, where July 4 is celebrated as Independence Day and the nation's birthday. At first, the war went badly for the Americans. After endless hard fightings and with the help of France, in 1781, the Americans won a decisive victory at Yorktown. In 1783, the British and the Americans signed the Treaty of Paris and the United States of America won its independence. American slavery existed after the first immigrants set up their settlements. In the South, the growth of cotton and tobacco plantation 
had made the southern economy increasingly dependent on slave laborers. Meanwhile, many Americans, especially in the northern states, began to oppose the slavery. They wanted to get rid of the slavery. They hoped to get slaves from the south because there was a growing demand for laborers in the northern factories. The conflicts between the South and the North were growing. When Abraham Lincoln became the president in 1861, some of the southern states had withdrawn from the Union. They formed the Confederate States of America and selected a new president. The American Civil War began in April 1861 when the South fired in South Carolina. In 1863, Lincoln realized that by making a war against slavery, he could win support for the Union at home and abroad. Accordingly, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which granted freedom to all slaves. On April 1865, the South surrendered to the North. The Civil War resolved two issues. Slavery was completely abolished and America became a single, indivisible nation. At the start of World War I, President Wilson claimed the neutrality of the United States. But in 1917, the U.S. entered the war for several reasons, such as the hurt of American trade and the chance to influence the result of the war. American troops played an important role in turning the tide of the war. But President Wilson's attempt to secure the world by his 14 points, which was actually an effort to establish the U.S. domination in the world. This met with strong opposition from Britain and France. After World War I, America saw a short-term development in the 1920s. But unexpectedly, the Great Depression broke out. President Roosevelt introduced the New Deal, which helped the country get out of the Depression. In the early days of World War II, the American government took a wait-and-see attitude. The American capitalists wanted to continue their trade with the warring countries. In 1941, the Japanese air attack on Pearl Harbor made the American government decide to enter the war. In 1945, Japan surrendered after Americans dropping two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Soon after, World War II ended. After World War II, America became the strongest power in the Western world. According to Truman Doctrine, the U.S. aimed to establish its hegemony in the world. Thus began the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union. Elsewhere, the United States launched the Korean War in 1950 and the Vietnam War in 1954. America paid the price for the wars, especially the latter. In 1973, President Nixon signed an agreement to announce the U.S. military involvement in the Vietnam War ended. America lost over 5,800 lives in the war. The war greatly weakened America and sharpened the country's domestic contradictions. President Nixon achieved two diplomatic breakthroughs, re-establishing U.S. relationship with China and negotiating the first strategic arms limitation treaty with the Soviet Union. The 1980s witnessed that President Reagan's tight money policies made the inflation under control. However, 
The policies also led to an increasing gap between rich and poor, and the social welfare programs had been curtailed. In the 1990s, President Clinton acted on many important issues. Measures for economic recovery were taken, and the developments began to shape during his term. His second term saw a vigorous economic development. On September the 11th, 2001, the United States suffered a fatal foreign attack against its mainland. Four airplanes crashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. The September 11 event shifted the country's attention away from the struggling economy to the problem of domestic security. Terrorism. Thus, became the new economy of the country. It launched a military operation against the Taliban in October 2001. The war on terror began. Taliban regime was removed from power on March the 20th, 2003. American and British troops, supported by several other countries, began the invasion of Iraq. Saddam Hussein was hanged in 2006. And in 2011, Osama bin Laden was killed. But it proved more difficult to fight the wars. In 2008, American financial crisis triggered the worldwide recession. The America tried to revive its economy with various measures. Today, the interventionist policy of the country is increasingly countered. By rising powers such as China and Russia, that is what the U.S. looks like in the 21st century. What will the United States be like under President Biden in the future? Eyes on it.